All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of Kel. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is episode 111, and today I have some extremely exciting, exclusive, breaking news from a remarkable, ongoing archaeological investigation at the Osirion in Abydos, the Osirion 7 mission, which is a continuation of the exploratory work of James Westerman started in 1986 in conjunction with the Asita project starting in 2013. And if you want to see the full video referenced in today's episode, I will put a link to the Asita Project website in the video description below. If this is the type of content you're interested in regarding the ancient technology of a lost civilization, utilizing physics and chemistry, and the function of the Egyptian pyramids and other ancient structures from across the world, this is the channel for you. So please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube. And don't forget to click that little notification bell so that you do not miss the new episodes that premiere twice per week. Please like, comment, and stay tuned if you want to help support the channel. Check out the Land of Chem members only section, link in the video description below, for exclusive research related content and unreleased footage that you will not see anywhere else. If you want to pick up a copy of the book or grab some Land of Chem merch, just check out thelandofchem.com. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. Also, after you finish watching today's video, please go subscribe to Egypt Eats and Egyptian Trash Cats, our two new channels here on YouTube. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for the support. I think that is it for today's intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. Now, just a quick reminder, for anyone that is interested in coming to Egypt to see the pyramids for yourself, the 2024 Land of Chem Ancient Alchemy and Ascension Tour is on and bookings are now available. For a taste of what you can expect during this life-changing adventure experience, check out the tour promo that just dropped last week. And if you want to join, please send me an email to contact at thelandofchem.com with the subject line 2024 Egypt Tour, and I will send you the full itinerary and pricing details. Thank you all so much, and I will see you soon here in Egypt. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. And in episode 84, link in the video description below, I presented an explanation of the configuration of the Osirion in anticipation and preparation for today's video. And now it is finally time to start revealing some of the absolutely monumental data that has been collected thus far during the Osirion 7 mission. So now just a quick overview of the structure and I'll put a link to episode 84 so you can get caught up in detail. Here, you can see a top-down image of the Osirion and the cells. Here, a 3D recreation by Keith Hamilton showing the water level inside the structure and the granite pillars. Again, by Hamilton with the granite roof beams still fully intact. And here are some images from the Asita Project's expedition to the Osirion, where they investigated this hole within the central island platform that was also studied and probed by James Westerman in 2012. So now Westerman, as the Osirion 7 mission lead, obtained permission from the Egyptian government for a full-scale archaeological investigation titled the Osirion 7 mission, which began in July of this year. And the primary objective of this mission is to determine the source of the water inside of the Osirion, which they have now proven is not connected to the Nile River. It is a completely independent water source. As you can see again here, depicted by Keith Hamilton, there is a mysterious source of underground water located directly below the Osirion. And during the recent conference 
for the Egypt Exploration Society on December 6th here in Cairo entitled Uncovering Abydos. The Osirion 7 mission team began to reveal not only the preliminary data that they have collected over the past six months, but they also gave some critical clues regarding the function of this structure. So now let's dive into the presentation that was shown at this conference. And here they stated, one, that the Osirion is a low-lying, largely subterranean structure. Two, the core of the Osirion was built with huge granite blocks, all of which we already know, but more importantly, three, the temple is unusual in the way that it was built to interact with the groundwater. And this is a significant detail regarding the function of the Osirion, which I will be unveiling in an upcoming episode. Next, on to the objectives of this mission. First, the primary objectives. The aim of this study is to investigate the source of the water at the Osirion, understand and conceptualize the flow direction and flow regime in the area to determine how the water gets into the western recess on the central island and to investigate the age of the groundwater using carbon-14 analysis. And at this point, I will say that the source of the water underneath this structure is unbelievably ancient. And I believe the inevitable conclusions of this research project will expose the truth about the vast antiquity of the Osirion structure itself. It is far older than the conventional story would lead you to believe. Now, onto the equipment being utilized during this mission. As you can see here, these data loggers. So in July of 2023, three in situ Aquatrol 200 data loggers were installed in and around the Osiria. Quote, this is the first time this technology has been used in an archaeological project here in Egypt. The first data logger was installed directly inside the Osirion Western Canal. The second data logger was installed 100 meters west of the Osirion, and the third data logger was installed in a newly drilled well 315 meters southwest of the Osirion. So as you can see, this is a revolutionary archaeological investigation, the likes of which have never before been conducted here in Egypt. And in these images, you can see the installation of these three data loggers within these wells. This one showing the drilling of the new well titled the Aziz well. And here, the installation of the data logger inside a drill core within the Osirion itself. Again, this is an intensive archeological study that is pushing the boundaries of what has been done before in Egypt. Now, here you can see the location of these three wells and the data collection devices housed within. Here is the Aziz well, here is well entitled the observation well, and this is the well within the Osirion itself. And as I mentioned before, they conclusively know that the source of the water inside of the Osirion is not the Nile River. It is a completely independent water source. And the preliminary data has supported this fact as you can see here. In green, showing the fluctuations of the water level of the Nile River from 2010 to 2012, as compared to the fluctuations of the water level inside the Osirion and the Roman well in the adjacent Abydos Temple, which you can see here depicted in red and blue. And if these two were connected to the Nile River, you would expect to see that the water levels inside the wells corresponded to the fluctuations of the water level of the Nile River. However, you can see that this is not the case. 
as the source of the water inside the Osirion has no connection whatsoever to the Nile River. And determining the source of this water is the primary objective of the Osirion 7 mission. But as you can see here, they are also looking at some very interesting data that is specifically relevant to my hypothesis on the function of this structure. They are investigating, quote, the water pressure, the water temperature, the depth of the water, the actual conductivity, specific conductivity, salinity, TDS, otherwise known as total dissolved solids, the resistivity, and the density. Now, these four factors, the actual and specific conductivity, the salinity, the total dissolved solids, and resistivity should all have your attention. And I will be returning back to this data as more is revealed throughout the mission. And for now, I think they are keeping most of the data under wraps until they fully understand what is going on, as they have only presented two of the data categories during this conference, the first of which you can see here, the temperature of the water within these three test wells. And as you can see, the temperature of the observation and the Aziz well remained completely consistent and comparable to each other. However, the well water inside of the Osirion experienced vast fluctuations over the past six months. The first indication that the source of the water below the Osirion is completely separate from that of the other two test wells. And this is where it gets really interesting. The source is not the Nile River, and the source is not the same as the other two test wells located in close proximity to the Osirion. Now, on to the conductivity. And you can see here that the specific conductivity of the observation and test wells here in orange and blue, again, remained very consistent and comparable. But there are vast fluctuations of the specific conductivity of the water within the Osirion, demonstrating once again the completely independent source of the water below this unbelievably ancient underground structure. And to conclude, I will quote here, the project is at a very early stage in the data gathering process. However, the existing data indicates, first, that the water within the Osirion has distinct characteristics making it unlikely that it comes from the same source as the other two monitoring wells. Second, samples from all three sites are currently with an Egyptian laboratory to validate the data collected so far. Third, seasonal variations in groundwater conditions need to be established. We are very keen to establish the conditions over winter. More data collection will be necessary before firm conclusions and or hypothesis can be reached. And finally, we hope to be able to provide updates at future conferences. And that's where it ends for now. But ladies and gentlemen, this is extremely exciting, important, intensive, and legitimate archeological work that is being conducted at the Osirion. And I can tell you for sure that what they are investigating is of the utmost significance. So if you wanna see the full video referenced today, I will put a link to the Asita Project website in the video description below. And I'm very proud to say that as a member of the ACIDA Project team, you will also find my work prominently featured on their home page. So thank you so much to everyone at the ACIDA Project for giving me the opportunity to be involved and for having faith in my research. This is a dream come true for me to get recognition from such an exceptional organization. And coming up later this week on the Members Only channel, a New Year's Eve exclusive, I will finally reveal the function of the Avebury Serpent Temple Complex, including never before seen footage from Longstone's Cove with the Adam and Eve stones and an explanation of the mythology of the feathered serpent god Kukulkan in relation to the function of Chichen Itza. 
I can honestly say that this is the best episode that I have ever produced containing the most vital information that I have discovered. So if you want to help support the channel and get access to the exclusive content, you can join the members only channel link in the video description below. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 111, breaking news from the Osirian 7 mission. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. And in this week's Sunday site visit, the spectacular footage from my expedition to the Heapstown Karn and Caro Hill. This is an episode that you do not want to miss. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification bell if you are interested in the ancient technology of a lost civilization utilizing chemistry and physics and the function of the Egyptian pyramids and other ancient structures from across the world. If you want to help support the channel, check out the Land of Chem members only section and thelandofchem.com if you want to pick up a copy of the book or grab some Land of Chem merch. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at the Land of Chem. Also, don't forget, after you finish watching this video, go check out our two new channels here on YouTube, Egypt Eats for food reviews and Egyptian Trash Cats for our adventures caring for our Egyptian street cat family. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you so much for your support. I think that is it for today's episode. So I will see you next time. Yo, are you still watching this? Please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button. New videos coming out every single week. And check out this other episode. Come on, do it. Do it now. <laughs>